Boogity boogity. Welcome okay. to calculus. Yes, welcome to calculus. Very good. Uh, we're going to talk today about something I mentioned at the beginning. It's called uh, p vang Okay, who knows what or thinks what p vang is? Any idea? <laughs> um, okay, what, what p vang represents is the letters of representations that we use in mathematics and particularly we sort of bring them all together in calculus. Okay, the first thing P represents the physical. Are we writing these? Uh, yeah, it would be good to write these down and probably somewhere at the beginning of your, like on this? your book. It could be right on, yeah, it could be on the top there. Yeah, that would be fine. You are on the back of it. Or, well, get back has another thing. That's anyway. Important. Okay, physical. Okay, so what we do, and the reason calculus and mathematics was invented was to represent a physical world. So anything we do in mathematics pretty much had its genesis in some representation of a physical world, of an economic world, and so forth. And so there, you ask the question, does this have a real world use? We may not be able to see it, but, the, but it comes from there. V represents verbal, okay? So we have a verbal articulation of a situation. So these are, we represent the physical world using verbal, and then A represents, we call analytic. Analytical, or analytic, right? Analytical. And usually, Usually this has its representation in algebraic symbols. Algebra, it would be nice if I could spell algebra. Okay. And then uh, N represents what? Uh, numerical. Numerical. And numerical can be represented as sets of ordered pairs, but usually we see them represented in tables. And finally, uh, G represents what? Graphical. Graphical, exactly. Oh, look at me go. You're a nerd. <laughs> and so, so what that does is the graphical representation uh, is like a picture of what happens, uh, like, like a visual snapshot of numerical and analytical. And so we're going, to, we're going to be, during this year, I hope, tying all this together. And a lot of times, when we work through these last three, we're going to forget. We're going to forget these two, physical and verbal. But they're always there. They're always there, and there's always a reason for what we, why we do this, okay? Questions about that? Anybody? The, uh, these last three, analytical, numerical and graphical can be uh, encapsulated in our graphing calculator pretty much. You can see all those. Okay, let's go to the calculus roller coaster. Okay, the calculus roller coaster, and if you have that in your packet, you can just kind of turn this in this orientation here. It would be helpful. And the calculus roller coaster helps us to understand the first basic concept of calculus. And so what I'm going to do for this calculus roller coaster is make out of it a coordinate grid. Okay, so we have an XY coordinate plane right here. And what we're trying to find is we're trying to find uh, if this roller coaster, we'll consider this red one here, this red piece. In this roller coaster here, can you, can you visualize what the slope is of this curve as we go throughout? It looks like x equals y. Yeah, it starts out with x equals y. Yeah. But what we're, and, and so Gavin's right about that, pretty, pretty much, okay? But what we're going to follow, follow is not, we're more interested not in 
that portion of the graph, but we're interested in the curve portion. Now what happens is that uh, when you talk about x equals y, like Gavin said, you're talking about a linear situation, right? And linear situation is what you learned in Algebra 1 and that we, we still used. And we're still going to use it in calculus, but calculus really helps us. If we were looking just at a linear situation, would we really need calculus? No, we wouldn't. But we need calculus to help us with the curve, with the rate of change, when the rate of change is changing. And so uh, Gavin talked about the slope being 1 up to here, but you can see a gradual change in slope, can't you, as soon as, as the, the cars start to, start to curve like this, right? So what we try to do in what we call differential calculus, which is where we start, is we try to answer the question, what is the slope at a given point? Okay, and so we're going to try to find and try to estimate what is the slope at this point. Okay, what, what is slope at this point? At the tip top? Uh, not at the tip top. I don't have it at the tip top. No, it's kind of arbitrary, so it's just past the tip top, right? Now, at the very tip top, what would be the slope at the very tip top? Like that? Uh, z uh, zero. The slope yeah. would be zero because, and we're going to get into this, at, at the very top, you would have what we call a horizontal tangent line, okay? And the slope would actually be zero at that horizontal tangent line. We're going to use that later on. But what, we, what are ways, can we calculate what the slope of this at this point is? And the slope, by the way, I just mentioned it, is what we call a tangent line. And I didn't draw it real well. We'll call this a tangent line. And a tangent line comes up perfectly from a curve. Okay, what are ways we can calculate or estimate what this tangent line is? <laughs> with an equation. Uh, with an <laughs> equation? Uh -huh. We can do that. What would that equation be? Somewhere. Okay. What we can do is we can take, we can take points on either side of this point. Okay, like this one here and this one here, and we can go ahead. Can we find the coordinates of that point, yeah. of, the, of, of these points? Yes, we can. And what can we do with the coordinates? What can we determine from these two coordinates? Ah, the line. You can find the line or, or the slope of what we call a secant line. And the slope of the secant line, we call this the average rate of change between two points. And I'll put average average rate of change. And that's going to be the slope. Of, of secant line will be the average rate of change. And we can use this average rate of change to estimate on either side of this point here to estimate the exact slope at this point. And we can take this, we can take points closer and closer, like if we took two points here, if we draw this closer, is that going to be a closer representation of what the slope is at this point? It will be, right? And you can see, I, you can visualize, I hope, if you get 
really, really close, like an insy bitsy close on either side, you're just about there, right? You just about have that. Well, in calculus, what we do is we we figure out because up until we use calculus, we can use algebra to figure out the the slope between secant lines, right? But calculus is where we actually finish the job and find exactly what it is. But we use an estimate. And the slope of tangent line, we call this the, okay, slope of tangent line. We call this the, we call this the first derivative of a function. slope of the tangent line, first derivative of the function, there is, uh, in the world of, there are things that we look at in the physical world, we look at position, position, velocity, velocity for example is the first derivative of position. So velo that's a physical representation. Velocity of the position function. Now, for example, we have a, if you shoot a projectile up in the air, you can have a, a position function, which we call, a lot of times, by convention, you call that x of t is equal to uh, negative 16 t squared plus, we'll call it 128 t. And the first derivative of this would be velocity, which I'm going to call v of t, is going to be equal to negative 32t plus 128. And so this is going to be an equation that gives us the velocity of the position. And we're going to find out how to get there. But basically we're using the limiting process to find what that actual slope is at that point. And that's the essence of what calculus is. So we're going to be at least the first semester going into that. Now the second semester we're going to get into something called integral calculus. And integral calculus, what, inter what, they, what that does is it works backwards. Okay, instead of going from here to here, we're going to go from velocity up to position. All right? And so uh, the, t the calculus enables us to do a lot more and really its invention revolutionized our world and made the technology and amenities of what we see today and have today as conveniences possible. All right? Okay, so we're just gonna we're just going to leave it at that. Any any questions though? Okay, very good, very good. We'll just stop it there.